So get ready, guys. Let's hear it. And just like that, Munchkin is back in our element, the Atlantic Ocean. And you could think that this was going to be the end of our journey with Munchkin. But Quan, honestly, it's, it's, it's quite the opposite. This is really when Munchkin's journey begins. The story's not over. Yeah. Nope. Here she comes. I actually get more anxious after we release the turtle because then I'm going to be monitoring her in real time. Pretty soon we will be logging into the computer and I'll be watching where she goes along with Dr. Cara Dodge. She's only a few feet back to her home. And we'll be trying to understand not only the survivorship of this turtle, but where does this species and this age class tend to go when they're here. This is what Connie is talking about the GPS tag that has been attached to Munchkin's back, and one of the most valuable tools we have to understand the life of these animals. You might think that an animal this size would be an animal we already know a lot about, but the truth is quite the opposite. We do get people who ask if we already know enough, and those are usually people who had no idea that sea turtles were even off of Cape Cod. So there's a lot we don't know about these turtles and what they're doing here. Much of the life of sea turtles still remains an unsolved mystery to science, and especially with turtles up here in the Cape Cod area. For our sea turtle conservation program, our goal is to return animals to the wild. So we need to know whether rehabilitated sea turtles survive, and we can't tell if they survive unless we track them or monitor them in some way. The other piece to this is to know whether Munchkin resumes her normal loggerhead behavior and returns to her old breeding waters. When it is time to breed, sea turtles return to the beach where they were once born. Loggerhead breeding populations and nesting beaches are found in several locations around the world, but we have no idea where Munchkin is from or if she will ever attempt to make the journey back to her origin, which could even mean as far as the Mediterranean Sea. The GPS tag is the only way we will ever find out. This particular satellite tag is extra cool because for Munchkin we'll be able to know where she is within like 20 to 30 meters. But for the tag to be of any use at all, it has to stay on her back and it can't run out of power. The steps taken to ensure the tag stays on Munchkin were meticulous. First, her carapace was thoroughly cleaned, no barnacles, algae or dirt of any kind could remain. Then a base layer of epoxy and fiberglass were made to create a foundation to attach the tag to. The tag was glued on with more epoxy glue and a special putty and a new layer of fiberglass added for extra security. And the next problem is to make sure it doesn't run out of power. The turtle surfaces and it had an antenna on the tag and when the antenna surfaces it's sending a radio signal to a satellite and it is able to calculate the turtle's position based on that information. The tag has to be out of the water in order for it to communicate with the satellites. So that tag actually has these little on-off switches that know when the tag's wet and dry. So it's continuously collecting data, but it's not trans continuously transmitting data. And already a couple of hours after she was released, we started getting positive news. Kara Dodge says, you guys are not going to believe this. Munchkin is already on the move and pinging in. Check out this map. It's working. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Over the first five days of being back in the ocean, Munchkin has already made incredible progress and showed signs of a promising adventure ahead. After a day of sticking relatively close to the coast in a westerly direction, she went straight south and through the Nantucket Sound and continued west past Martha's Vineyard. Wherever she goes from here, we can say for sure that the journey will not be easy and she will definitely face many dangers. No, my worst case scenario is going onto my computer and seeing Munchkin in the same location for hours at a time. That's not a good sign. Um, and going out and finding her that she's been hit by a boat or tangled up in something. So I guess the worst case scenario is Munchkin not surviving, not because of part of the rehabilitation process or anything like that, but because of just the number of um, human threats in her environment. There are seven species of sea turtles in the world and six of them are threatened with extinction. The issues sea turtles face are largely caused by humans, such as accidental bycatch in fishing gear, illegal trade and poaching, vessel strikes, loss of nesting habitats, plastic pollution, and changing climates. 
But the good thing is that we are learning more and more about these incredible animals and how to protect them and the marine environment in general. Thanks everybody for watching, for following Jonas and Haley and I as we follow along with Munchkin's journey. Make sure you go to munchkinsjourney.com where you can follow where she's going at any time via that satellite tag. And um, you know, it, remember you can help not only by picking up trash and making sure that the ocean stays clean, but also by helping support the aquarium and the work that they're doing at the Turtle Hospital. We'll see you in the next series.